Hi, this is Rizwan and you're watching the Indian Weekender. Lockdown has been hard for a lot of people all around the country and uh, it, uh, it has affected people's jobs. It has pe affected people's lives going out and not having to do uh, normal activities, social activities. A very important aspect of this uh, lockdown, uh, an important effect of this lockdown has been on families and uh, we are talking about family harm and domestic violence and this fact cannot be ignored or cannot be uh, said that it's not happening it is actually happening to know more about it we have director of Sahaita, an organization in uh, new zealand that has been working for uh, the families who are victims of family violence and domestic uh, violence and uh, we would like to know more about what's happening at this point of time and is there a rise and if people are suffering from uh, family harm or domestic violence what can they do what are the avenues uh, for them hi sister uh, how are you doing today Oh, very well. Thank you for having me here, Rizwan. Uh, it's, uh, it's lovely to be here to talk a little bit about what's happening with our communities. Yes. Let's go to the point. Uh, it's been uh, almost 26 or 27 days of lockdown. How is the community reacting to it? Uh, from your perspective, who, uh, from uh, Sahita's perspective, who looks after domestic violence in the community? You, like, like the Prime Minister said, I think for the large part, we are following through with the protocols that have been set out uh, in terms of um, community transmission and prevention of that. But having said that, um, the time that they are spending at home, they are really cooped up and uh, we have seen a big spike in family harm related incidents. Uh, for example, uh, in the past three weeks, three and a half weeks, we've received over 116, I think close to 120 referrals in family, family harm related uh, mm -hmm. coming through our doors uh, through police. Um, we've also seen uh, some other communities reaching out to us. Um, there is a lot of issues that they are experiencing right now, um, even with uh, uh, the uncertainty around jobs, their future, uh, businesses that are, um, you know, are going downhill. Um, time at home, but not knowing how to utilize it well. There are obviously very clearly some parenting issues that our families need to address. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. yes, there is a, there's been a really big spike in, uh, in family harm. The alcohol consumptions have gone up. I wanted to check as well that uh, besides lockdown, what constitutes to these uh, domestic violence in the house? Uh, what else? There's every family presents with different sets of issues, uh, Rizwan, and we cannot say that uh, education or the lack of or employment or the lack of are contributing factors. Sometimes they are, but you you have a range of people uh, across the sector that um, that have uh, present with family harm uh, issues. Um, you know, sometimes there's um, underlying financial issues. Sometimes there is exploitation because of being an immigrant in the family, not having permanent residencies for uh, women. Um, you know, sometimes it's not knowing their rights in the country and what's acceptable and not acceptable. Yes. Um, and for many of our men, it's how they've been conditioned over the years in terms of their privileges and what's acceptable to them. Um, so every family experiences a different set of um, issues that actually contribute to um, that to be perpetuated and that to persist over a period of time. So when we are talking about uh, family violence, are we also talking about uh, senior citizens being exploited by their children or is it just... Uh... Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of financial abuse out there. Uh, there's couples that are working a lot in, in you know, and you see the elderly are, are tasked with the jobs of doing chores at home, dropping kids up to school, picking them, walking them most of the time because some many of them don't know how to drive. Uh, and just a lot of restrictions around, you know, their socialization process. And it is very challenging for our elderly uh, if they're not supported well in this country. Um, the whole lives that they spend in looking after these children. And Indeed. there is that, uh, you know, assumption that they will be cared for in the old age, but that's not happening clearly for many of our elderly. In your knowledge, are most of the cases reported or are they being... Uh, you know, kept aside under the carpet. I think 20% of cases are what gets reported. There's 80% of them that do not get reported in our uh, in our communities. And in, for us, calling the police is always the last port of call, Rizwan. So the, even when we educate our police officers, when we talk to them, we tell them that it might look like a small incident in a one-off for you, but it's not a first incident for them. They yes. would have had 50, 60 incidents before they picked up the phone call to let you know. 
They would have talked to their friends. They would have talked to their families. They would have talked to their religious leaders. Um, you know, and if nothing else worked out, then they are calling the police to come and uh, address the issues. So, Please do you think uh, by the time the report gets to you, the situation has already crossed its its threshold yeah. and it is out of the hand? Yes, yes. In most cases, it is. And what is sometimes told, uh, disclosed to the police is just a very small part of it. When we engage with them, there is a lot of underlying, uh, you know, stuff that comes out. You know, family, what they've been experiencing for many years, uh, it just comes through in our conversations. Right. Um, oh. So it's very important oh. to take every case, just give that equal importance. What kind of impact does it have on the children and, uh, you know, on their minds, on their mental health and, and, the gro and how it happens their growth? Yes, our children, it's a very good point, a uh, very good question there, Rizwan. Um, our kids present with very high levels of anxiety in schools. Um, they have uh, a lot of mood, disor mood disorders. They are depressed. Their confidence levels get affected. Uh, their ability to um, in things, that is shattered. Um, there is no support. If you look at the schooling system, and if you look at, even if they have access to counselors or social workers. Yes. That child will spend one hour with them a week. But they are going back into a, a setup and a system which is extremely unhelpful you know for their growth and well-being you we find a lot of addiction issues in our teenagers we find at-risk behaviors on multiple levels uh, there is a lot of self-harm and cutting uh, for our young girls and boys um, so there, there is a massive impact and the underlying issues when we talk to these people um, uh, it comes through as family harm uh, that's been persisting for a long long time what should be the solution if a family or an individual, be a child, a, a husband or a wife, or a senior citizen or, or an elderly, as you mentioned, if they are suffering from this kind of uh, violence or family harm in the house, even even um, mm. just mental, not physical, what mm. to do? What is the first step that they should take? Reach out. Reach out to professionals. There is a lot of fear about getting external agencies. You know, I do see families say, Sansthaan ko hum involve ne karna chate te, hum log apne aap mein sort karna chate te, which is they wanting to sort it out amongst themselves and not involve other people. And I say, reach out, because professional bodies have a tendency to listen to and hold a space that's neutral, um, not swinging one way or another. Uh, you know, family members always tend to take sides out there. So it's always good to, the first time is a good enough time for you to call out and ask for help. Don't wait for it to go on and on to a point where things spill over and it is very hard to um, actually keep families safe in that environment. Uh, multiple external agencies getting involved, children being uplifted, it just gets very, very tedious and scary for the families and, and as, well as, as well as for the young people that are involved in there. So please reach out, make a call. You have a Crime Stoppers, you can reach out to them. There are multiple agencies that will hold your confidence treat you with a lot of respect and try to understand how best to support you. So don't think you're alone in this. Please call, ask for help, ask for guidance. Everybody, there are multiple agencies across New Zealand now, especially in Auckland, that can support you. So we talked about the victims, what avenues do they have? Uh, let's talk about the perpetrators uh, who are mm -hmm. actually doing this. Is there a solution at a ground level for them so that it uh, stops uh, their behavior and they realize that this is not right to be done to my family? Yes, yes there are many agencies across uh, New Zealand. You've got uh, Man Alive, you've got Friendship House that are, have been doing incredible work. We've got Gandhi Nivas here. What we've uh, uh, initiated here in, in 2014 is actually removing the person that's actually presenting with the violent behavior out of the home to take him into Gandhi Nivas. It provides free accommodation, temporary, uh, with free counseling for the entire family. And then when it's safe for him to return back to the family, he can go back to the family. So please reach out. You know, all you need to do is this 0800 Gandhi, this team always there 24 seven. Uh, it be operational all times of the year at any time they can call and ask help out there women can ring and say ask for advice and, uh, and options as to how best to support um are they men in the in the families uh, you know many times uh, when we talk to women they say um that he's a good husband he provides well you know he looks after the children very well it's just me and him 
uh, there's many things that are not working out for us. He's lost his uh, job or there are other things that are happening. Somebody passed away in the family. Um, you know, but I just want the violence to stop. I don't want to leave him. I don't want to divorce him. I want the violence to stop. I say to those women, call us early. Call us at a time when we can restore your relationship in a manner that is safe for you, for your children, um, and for the other individual. And it is important um, to, to not look at the family unit, um, to look at, sorry, agencies as, you know, intervening and destroy, destroying families. That's the concept that most people have. That the minute we talk to an external agency, they will split us up. Uh, that's not always the case. Only yes, when there are some serious safety concerns, that will be the option that uh, that the police and the other agencies will look at. Uh, before we end this interview, can you give us some advice to families, uh, especially when we, uh, as you spoke to one of our uh, interviewees uh, today about uh, Ramadan, which is coming up. Uh, so Ramadan is an important month for the Muslim families. And now that we are in a lockdown, a lot of the families uh, will be living together during this time. They will be not mm. eating during the day. The stress levels will be high. Mm. And uh, mm it can have uh, you know adverse effects or adverse behaviors within the families mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what would you suggest uh, to families uh, during for the next uh, three or four weeks that we are going to have the alert level three how should they uh, work together to prevent this thing altogether mm. you, what are the messages for ramadan there why do people observe it rizwan i ask you you know you need to take hold off you, the, the beliefs that actually are saying, you know, one of giving, one of peace, one of kindness and compassion, not lose those values out, out of the picture. And also being mindful that everybody is different and they respond to situations and things very differently. Uh, so it's extra patient when it comes to children, understanding how you're feeling. If, if it is a religious leader that you need to speak to, please do. If it is an agency that you need to call you and hold your confidence, speak to them. But do not ask for help. Wherever that is that you are wanting to, don't go through this alone. Don't feel that you are alone in this. There are so many people that are there to help and support. It is a festival that needs to be observed and celebrated and, you know, with loved ones. And we, can, we, can't, we can't lose track of that and, and be, let it become something else. Um, so there's help for children in your school. If, if you're a parent, if you're a mom who's concerned and you can't talk to anybody else, talk to your school teacher. They will help you, you know. Call an agency, speak to them for advice. Call, call 111, there's always, police is always there and they're very culturally sensitive, especially in counties Monaco. That's where we've seen the maximum spill of the referrals that have come through family harm spike as well. Um, contact them, ask for a Muslim uh, um, a police officer, somebody will be on the phone with you. Uh, if you think you need uh, a specific religious worker, there are religious institutions that will provide you. If yes. you want to call yes. multiple agencies and ask for a Muslim worker, there are many agencies that have one and they will provide you. But ask for help. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your wisdom, for the insight. Uh, if people want to report anything uh, uh, unhappy in the house or if they want to report that uh, there, is, has, there has been a report of family violence, how can they reach out to Sahita? They can contact us. Uh, we've got our uh, info at Sahita is an email. They can contact us at uh, 2804064. We instantly receive messages uh, on our phone, if they can call at any time of the night, any time of the day, we do get messages on there. You can reach out to 0800 Gandhi, uh, which is a 24 seven service. Um, we will be able to help you. And more importantly, the easiest number to dial would be 111 in case they're feeling unsafe. But if they do are, are concerned about a family member and they want to remain anonymous, they can contact Crime Stoppers 0800 555. Thank you so much, Uchida Kaji, for, uh, for all the help that you have provided. And uh, uh, we hope that you, uh, you do the good work and uh, help reduce domestic violence and family harm in our community. Thank you so much for your time and we'll talk to you soon.